Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about how to import video clips within Cubase and set up your film scoring project quickly so you can begin to write music right away. Let's take a look. Okay, so you've just got that director's brief and you've been given a video clip from the production company. Or maybe you've got that vlog clip, wedding footage, corporate video, whatever it is, and you need to load that up and do some composing and scoring too. Well, how do you do that as quickly as possible and make sure you don't set yourself up for failure and use Cubase the way it was designed for? I've got Cubase 11 Pro and a demo film clip I slapped together from some stock footage. Let's practice, shall we? Okay, let's jump right into this. So let's get into Cubase here. Now, let me make sure our screens are all visible. Okay, so here we go. We have a project that's opened up. It's pretty default, I believe. So what I'm gonna do is first import our video file that we might have. So I've got a clip here called Demo Action Q and I've got it at 720p. Now, this is something that's pretty important um, if you're gonna be um, scoring to a video and you're gonna be looping through it over and over again and you want something that's going to be easy for your computer to handle. So what you need to do, and this is something that you should always do and make sure that you get correct, is in project setup here. You want to make sure that you get the frame rate from the video. Or if you know what the frame rate is from the video, you can punch it in in the drop down list here. There you go. So that message is gone. We, we no longer have that warning. And also by clicking on that get frame rate, you know it's pulling it right from that video. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is launch the little preview window here or the video window and you can see here that you can also change the size of it so i usually have it somewhere around that size or maybe something even smaller sometimes it gets in the way when you're trying to write your your score here so if i just hit spacebar it starts playing looks pretty smooth okay that's great so we got that going now you'll notice that there's something that's pretty fundamental here that's missing is the time code so if you get a video that doesn't have a burnt in time code right on the image itself you can go ahead and go to studio setup and say show time code under video player so again that was studio studio setup under video player show time code and then you can pick where you want on the screen it's gonna superimpose itself on so I'm just gonna say in the center there you go so now that's something that's very important you can see how many seconds and how many frame you know, which frame you're at so remember this far right in SIMTI uh, time code is the actual frame that you're in so this is 30 frames per second right now we're looking at the 24th frame in that and if I want to move frame by frame you can just use your mouse and scrub to the right or left so I'm holding down the left mouse button and then um, dragging it left and right here so that's going to be important later on when we start adding the markers to this project so maybe we'll move on to that next. Actually, just before we move on to that, um, right now we have it at bar one at the very beginning of the video clip and it's at zero. But sometimes we want a little bit of a, a couple bars offset before this, just so we can have some space to maybe move some of our MIDI data or our audio around within Cubase um, before the clip begins. So what we can do is go back into the project setting or project setup here. And I wanna say display bar offset of, let's say a couple bars. And when it asks you, do you want to keep the project contents, everything here at its current bar position. So right now it's at bar one. I, I'm going to say, yes, keep it there. So it sticks to bar one, even though I'm going to add a couple more bars for off. There you go. So we're at bar one and I'm going to move our little cur our cursor to bar one. And something sometimes kind of odd happens with Cubase. I don't know why this happens but I can recreate it over and over again. Maybe someone in the comments can let me know. Is that it seems to, when you, even though you put it right at bar one and you have your cursor, literally, let's see if I, if I make sure I snap it to, yeah, the beginning of bar one here, it seems to make the time code starts at four seconds, which is incorrect. So what you need to do is make sure it's there at bar one and then go to project set time code at cursor and set this to zero second. And then it says you have modified. Okay, here's where you wanna say no, because you want, no matter what, at this point and this, where this video snapped to, you want it at zero second. There you go. So now if I look at it, we're at zero seconds again, and all this two bars are available to us. Okay, so we got it to this point. The next step I would do is create a marker track and call it whatever you want. I'll just leave it as default there. Okay, now one very important thing you want with a marker track when you're going to video here and syncing is go to the track control settings 
and make sure toggle time base is going to be available to you. So I just did that. Hit OK. And then you'll get this little icon here, toggle time base between musical and linear. What that means is that when you drop a marker, that marker is going to stay pinned versus against either musical, which is bars and beats, or against the exact time here. So we want it to be sticky to the time instead of bars and beats because we want to always follow the, the picture here. So at this point, you can go ahead and play your film. And if you've already got a cue sheet, maybe from a director or the production company, you can uh, follow off that and then start dropping all your different markers and stuff like that. Or if you know, you're, you're told to have free reign and go and figure out <laughs> what might make sense for this scene and you come up with um, some scoring and hit points to your liking, you can go ahead and play the film. So I usually just hit spacebar wherever I think there's something interesting or I can scrub faster through where I think it, it probably needs some sort of change of, of music or tempo. So I'm doing this super fast, by the way. <laughs> you probably want to uh, absorb it a little bit more. But here, I've already seen this clip several times. So I'm just going to go to the beginning of where her face shows up. There we go. And at this point, I want to drop a marker. And on Windows, you can just hit the Insert button and it'll drop it right there, exactly where you are um, with the film. And you can also click on the marker and then drag it around. Um, but right now I have it snapped to grid, so we don't want that. There you go. You can, you can drag it back and forth until you find the right moment that you want and the right frame. Okay, looks like frame 11 there. Um, oh yeah, the other thing you need to make sure you have enabled is um, there is a transport use video follows edit mode. So whatever you edit in, uh, whether it's MIDI or audio and anything that you scrub back and forth and, and you're making a change, the, the scene and what frame it's at will move along with your edit. So um, just make sure that's turned on. Okay, so yeah, here we go. So let's say we have a, a hit point that we want there. We drop a marker. Maybe we want another uh, mark right here when we see this base <laughs> air tower or some sort. Um, we can scrub some more and maybe we'll just throw another one. Actually, if you, you can do shift N to move between markers or shift B to move back and forth. So maybe I'll say, let's go over here. I'll scrub a little bit till right when we see this plane, maybe boom, right there. I'll drop another marker. Okay, and then of course markers, you can say, um, you can add descriptions here. So I'm just highlighting it, click in description. So pilot, intro, I don't know. And then this is base, uh, oh, we're flying. I don't know, something like that. Okay, so that's, that's all fine and dandy. So you go through your whole scene here and you can start punch putting in all these markers the next step would always add is a tempo track and would add a signature track those are all pretty pretty fundamental things that you need to make sure you have one so here comes the the key thing when you're trying to sync to video is you want to use this time warp tool and you see when i click on it this changes color a little bit here so what you can do is let's say you want the pilot intro here, this marker that I dropped in, uh, you want it right at the beginning of bar four. So right at the downbeat, you can hover your mouse over there until you get this little metronome looking thing. And then you can slide and adjust. You can see how the tempo is moving up and down. Yeah, you can move that bar over to exactly the beginning of that marker or where that frame was. So you can go drop as many of these um, time warp um, entries here as you need. So let's say I want this second marker of the base. I want that to start right at bar seven. So I would hover my mouse over there until I get that. And then I'll leave it there and drop it that like that. Okay, and then maybe we'll do one more here. Let's say, 11 is right when the overflying marker would be. Okay, so that should get you up and started. And then, of course, you would um, you can go ahead and start adding a you know all your instruments, or maybe this is a template already, and you're just loading the video into your template. 
that's also um, quite possible there. Okay, and so let's say I'm just gonna pick a patch here somehow. Maybe I'll get a pad. So at this point, let's say this is your track that you're working with. I'm just gonna change the color here and If you go to, I'm just going to create a MIDI kind of selection here. Now, if I just double clicked and opened up in this edit mode, one thing I really want to share with you that is a really handy tip that uh, will save you a ton of time is to click on global tracks here. I think this is a fairly new feature. You can highlight the tracks at, that you want to see as you're in this piano roll editing mode for MIDI. So this is super awesome where you can see the marker of exactly when, let's say, I want a uh, chord here. Um, actually, while we're at it, let's just do a whole chord. I don't know if you guys have ever used this chord editing tool. It's pretty handy if you don't want to play things in and you just want to just slap in some chords very easily, very quickly. So, I don't know, D minor, we'll do a... Uh, So you can see how you can just follow in sync to uh, what you marked earlier. All right, so I don't know, just for fun. Let's see what this looks like now. <laughs> uh, it's not gonna win you any Grammys or uh, Oscars for that, but I think you get the idea. So that's what you can do. Another thing I need to share with you is for even your MIDI tracks, if you want it to follow along with uh, linear or musical mode. You also need to, with each one, go to track control settings and toggle time base and add it as well. Now, so right now this is following the bars and beat and sometimes you want it to actually follow the picture itself. So um, just remember that that's also available to you. If you ever, uh, let's say, decide to change some of these, the, the tempo within um, this segment right here, So if I left it musical, it didn't really follow along of uh, what I wanted there, right? Okay, let me set that back to there. Now, if I did, did it to linear mode, you can see how the MIDI notes actually follow along. And just like with the marker, we'll, we'll be sticky to that particular frame. So if I always want that uh, chord change right at that frame, that's how you can do it. And then you can kind of um, pick and choose from there of how you want to deal with um, your different scenes and sticking different parts of the, the track. So maybe I'll leave it at that <laughs> to get you started and play around with the time warp tool, moving it around and, and lining up to certain hit points and also play around with the tempo and see how it starts to affect the expansion contraction of uh, the bars and beats and, and where it lines up with some of these markers. Okay, so through the magic of YouTube or TV, we've uh, gone ahead and uh, done a, a little bit of fun scoring and quickly slapped together some things. And I thought I'd share a few things for you here of how to work with this. So I've adjusted around with time signatures and I changed my mind and I need to align things back up again. You'll see here, for example, that the solo flying marker is no longer landing on a downbeat. Um, the beginning of a bar here so i want to for example make sure that's starting at the beginning of bar eight here again sometimes i you'd need to make some adjustments here so i can put i can grab that uh oh i can grab that and then move it until the beginning of bar eight lands right at the solo flying marker again so, or i could have deleted that and uh, since I didn't like how it was lining up incorrectly there, I can literally hover my mouse over bar eight, click to create a time warp entry, and then make that line up right to the <clears throat> that marker. Similarly over here, maybe I don't like what's happening over here. You can press shift to delete that time warp entry. And I'm gonna, let's say, grab um, the beginning of bar 12 for this enemy squadron marker just make that line up there okay since you're still here thanks for uh sticking around and yeah, i hope that was uh handy for you and we'll just uh i'll play you out with uh this cue
All right, I'll see you and have a great rest of the week.